Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me in real solar system with the um, launch of a test vehicle. I'm doing some parachute testing because I am planning to go to the moon. This is the testing episode. Um, the first bit is just testing some parachutes and basic sort of re-entry at low-ish velocities. Um, I don't really know what kind of parachutes will stop this pod because it's not um, what it looks like. It looks like the standard 2.5 meter pod, but it's actually 3.75 meters, and I think mass is about the same, so it should be fine, but I am a little paranoid that it will just smash into the floor, um, as things with parachutes tend to, um, because parachute landing a space capsule, not the greatest idea, because it's not what SpaceX are doing, basically. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> into four times time accelerate, because this is going to take a while. I'm, of course, not going to orbit, because... Uh, well, now this is just a parachute test, not a re-entry test, which will be coming later in the episode with a much bigger rocket. So I just strapped um, a fairly nice looking solid rocket booster to the bottom of this, um, so that I could get some decent thrust and just get fairly high in the atmosphere and hopefully around 2 kilometers per second, just to kind of test that the heat shields work-ish. I'm thinking of getting um, a better skybox for this. Um, because the, the stock one's alright, but I like their custom um, stars and stuff, which I have on a save I'm using right now. Anyway, rotating the spacecraft is these four RCS thrusters, which is my only rotation. It also translates the craft quite seriously. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's just a very simple RCS system. There are no crew on board. This is powered entirely by MechJab, I believe. Um, but yeah, I quite like these RCS thrusters just for maintaining attitude. Um, I believe they use hydrazine, yes, they do use hydrazine, and I have about 80 units within this pod. Um, it just saved me putting uh, a few, um, um, an RCS tank on this, because you have to connect the RCS tanks to the RCS thrusters, because it's all, like, realistic or something. Realism overhaul does add a lot of things. <clears throat> anyway, you can see I'm coming back quite fast, but it does not heat up that much, because um, it's been rebalanced for the real world. Anyway, um, this the video will slow down for a uh, decouple of the... Um, heat shield and deployment of the parachute, which all goes fine because, well, those are some fairly simple bits. It's just one big parachute I think I'm using. I'm not actually doing the analog of um, Apollo. Anyway, we sped up back to four times time. Sorry. Yeah, this will not. This mission won't be an analog of Apollo. It will be similar, <clears throat> but it will not be the exact same. Um, I have been to the moon once before in real solar system. You may have seen that video if you've been with this channel for a while, or you may want to go and check it out, but I don't remember how good it was, so maybe you should just watch this, because I will be going to the moon in the next episode, which may be next week or some other time. Anyway, now slow down for a nice cinematic, weirdly low frame rate shot as I splash down. I get ba really bad frame rates with real solar system, and it uses up 98% of- no, it uses about more like 80% of my RAM, um, because I have so many mods installed. Um, just firing the RCS thruster for some reason. Anyway, onto the Space Launch System Block 1A. I have done a video on this. This is a 105 ton lifter. It is an analog of um, the Block 1A Space Launch System that NASA are developing. Um, yeah, so it, the Block 1 will take 70 tons to low Earth orbit. This will take 105 tons to orbit. When you put a top stage on it, it's a Block 2, and it will take somewhere in the region of 130 tons to orbit. I have not um, made a block two yet because I, uh, well, firstly I haven't needed it. Secondly, I have a much bigger launch vehicle, um, which I have done. Uh, it's called my Jupiter One or something. It's a 200 ton launch vehicle, and um, well, it's actually more like 195 tons um, because whenever I do uh, 200 tons, it makes it puts it in orbit. The orbit's just sometimes a little tricky because it takes so long to burn because it uses the Apollo engines with giant solid rocket boosters, and the Apollo upper engines, the J2 cluster of five, is not as powerful as I'd like. Anyway, again, speeding through this launch, because you do not want to watch it all, um, is, yeah, basically just going to orbit, and this has basically the spacecraft I'm taking to the moon, although it does need some um, tweaking and adding of things. Um, yeah, I'm using some of the more interesting pods, which... Part, well, partly I'm using them because they're much lighter um, than the pods I'm given by other things, and because I like the look of them. Um, yeah, so it is a, a kind of an Apollo setup with um, uh, a lander that will be landed and returned to the uh, command module sort of thing. Um, 
but it is in a slightly different way to Apollo because I've already done a basically Apollo analog. Actually, when I did it, I didn't use um, real tanks or real fuels or something. So the tanks were incredibly heavy and it was only just possible, actually. It was very almost not possible and I very almost did fail, but I was very committed. Um, and the launch vehicle I used was kind of bullshitty. Um, it was actually a Falcon Heavy type setup with two outer boosters and one inner core, but because KW... Um, tanks are much lighter, it looks like it's like nine cores, which it technically is. Um, but yeah, so I wasn't particularly happy with that. But now I have all the mods set up to be more like the real world, it is a little easier. I do in fact have a Saturn V rocket I'm th I was tempted to use, but I'm actually using a very different transfer stage um, to go to the moon, um, so Saturn V will not be appropriate for this. Um, but it would be interesting to use because Saturn V is a really wonderful launch vehicle and I do very much like my Saturn V, although it's less stable than my space launch system, so I'd very much like to use my space launch system. Um, anyway, well, talking of stable, it starts to rock around crazily as the SES starts to gimbal those engines. Those engines gimbal a lot and when they start gimbling they start trying to correct themselves by gimbling, and it looks awesome, but it's very annoying to fly. As you will see, I have left this at four times time accelerate because it takes a while, and because it's kind of funny to watch this just mess around at four times. Look at that, look at this, just ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty insane. Um, I do like how the gimbling has been redone. It does make it quite nice. It does allow for um, rotation as well, like spinning. Um, yeah. Those are, I think, what are the, what, are, what kind of engines are they? Those are the space shuttle engines, the Rockadyne somethings. I did decouple the fairings earlier, actually, but they didn't come off because fuck the world. Um, my orbit is not actually brilliant, but that's fine because it's kind of what I want, because I want to be in a slightly inclined orbit. But yeah, anyway, decoupling this, this is what will be going to the moon. It looks very small in compared to the space launch system, which is tumbling away now. Um, anyway, I'm going to detach this and perform the docking that I will have to perform because this is similar to the um, Apollo in that um, it is uh, uh, you that I turn around and dock to but I just like that. This is called Sierra. This is what I've called the mission. So I like the idea of I like the name Sierra. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any torque in this vessel, so I'm using entirely hydrazine monopropellant. I also don't have very much electric charge at all because I don't have any solar panels on this because this is more of a dead weight. Um, and a re-entry test than anything else. Um, but yeah, we uh, just kind of use the RCS to maintain attitude-ish. Um, and it was kind of difficult because um, my friend had arrived, um, so I was just kind of recording this. But he's uh, is Jacob, the guy who's been on the channel a few times. Um, so yeah, he was understanding. Um, yeah, this could basically go to the moon, although there are a few problems. Like, this doesn't have any solar panels. Um, the transfer stage uses balloon tanks, not uh, like stable, like pressurized tanks, so uh, it has an unstable fuel flow, um, which is rather annoying as, um, well, because then I can't actually use it in space because the fuel's all floating around, so it does need to be pressurized. It was a little weird little blip there, that's actually just because I deleted some footage and forgot to move all the footage back, <laughs> but it's fine. Anyway. It looks like I have performed the docking fairly successfully. The docking ports are gigantic compared to the pods because the pods are um, a mod that isn't fully supported by um, realism overhaul. Um, and so the uh, docking ports are much bigger than the pods. Um, well, not bigger than the pods, but they're freaking huge. But it doesn't really matter. I've made it work. These little solar panels I've included will need to be um, bigger solar panels because they don't articulate um, towards the sun and they don't provide enough power. Um, so my re-entry will be slightly different to what I expected, because there are also no batteries on the command pod. It has very little electric charge and no power generation. So that's good. Yeah, it's a good start. Anyway, um, I need to rotate this so that I am pointing retrograde so I can deorbit. Oh no, prograde so that I can go into a higher orbit. Basically, the plan for this mission um, was to go into an extremely, um, in extremely elliptical orbit which basically crossed the moon, and then come back and probably test the re-entry. However, that transfer stage doesn't work, um, because, um, but because it's using unpressurized tanks, because I'm a buffoon. Um, and the other engines are not really that powerful, so it would take quite a while. And um, I recorded this like 20 minutes ago, and I have a lot of things to be doing, because I'm incredibly busy, actually. Um, 
has this been sped up or slowed down? No, I think this is about to be sped up because it's kind of um, fairly tedious. Yeah, as I was saying, I am a fairly busy person. Um, yeah, I mean, between doing A-levels um, and running a YouTube channel, which I try to upload to four times a week, um, and game programming and other programming and kung fu and playing guitar and other things. I'm I'm a fairly busy person. And I don't I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean I like uploading to this YouTube channel as much as possible. It's not like I want to be uploading less because well, I just when it when when the channel's doing slightly better, I feel better because like recently I've been getting like four or five subscribers every day, which is really nice. And like more views than I've ever had. Um <laughs> Which is just just makes you feel pretty good about it. Anyway, into four times time accelerate, we must um, well, just screw up lots of times. Anyway, my attempt here was that I would be, um, was I pointing? Yes, my engine was pointing retrograde. Retrograde. Anyway, um, I, that was an oversight. So even if I had fired up, it would have deorbited me. Anyway, as you can probably see, um, in a second, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll decouple that because um. The fuel flow is unstable. I send this man over into the um, LEM, the Lunar Excursion Module, which I will have to uh, change the name of so it's not all apollo -y. And I attempt to burn into a higher orbit. Um, this does have torque. The LEM actually does, somehow. Um, anyway, um, I attempt to burn into a higher orbit and then kind of realize that I won't have the electric charge to stay... Um, hey, well, to, and tack life support is on. So my Kerbals will die if I keep doing this, basically. So... I decide maybe that's not a great idea, and I try and orient the solar panels in the right way, and then I decide just to kind of come home, put him back in the command pod, because the command pod has a heat shield, um, and just try and deorbit this. I have never brought a command pod back successfully with deadly reentry on real solar system, so I don't really know where to put my periaps, so I pick 39 kilometers, and that's a little harsh, because I don't really know the composition of Earth's atmosphere, because I'm not, um, well, I'm not really much of a scientist. Um, anyway, so I transfer all the electric charge into the command module, so we will have um, electric charge on descent, and stop it being able to use it. And I'm going to decouple that, because I don't need it. And I'm going to get rid of that, because I don't need it. Um, that was the landing stage. And as I get out, the, um, the, tran the, um, service module comes back and slams into the pod, which probably wrecked that heat shield, which I'm going to blame for what happens soon. Um, and I can't grab that panel, uh, that um, battery, because it's not supported by TAC life support, because, um, I don't know, God hates me, I guess. <laughs> anyway, decoupling that, because we are about to re-enter, and I don't really want a LEM attached to me, although that may have been useful. Um, and it starts to burn up at 67 kilometers, so I'm thinking 39 kilometers was too low for my periaps. And it starts to heat up quite seriously. Um, although if I can click on that goddamn heat shield, because it's kind of hard to. And it's already at like 600 degrees Celsius, uh, which in Fahrenheit is a lot of degrees, I bet. Um, I think it's like you add 30, then double it, so that's like 1200 degrees Fahrenheit or something. I'm not fully sure. <laughs> Anyway, something burned up, and it is the LEM. You can see it exploding there. Um, every now and again, you can see me flicking to look at it, and it's being exploderized. Um, and it is completely destroyed now. So yeah, don't re-enter in the Lunar Excursion module. It will just blow up. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to die here, because the heat shield is overheating, as you can see in the staging. But then it starts to cool down, and I calm down, because that's nice. It's started to cool down. But then I look at my deceleration, and we're up to 6G's, 7G's deceleration. 8 G's deceleration almost, and that's going to start killing my Kerbal soon. <clears throat> um, but we're probably not going to burn up, and it looks like it's going to start slowing down pretty soon. Stop, you know, hopefully won't get up to 9 G's, because that's pretty dangerous. That's about as much as a human can survive. And then it explodes and burns up for some reason. I think just because I hit thicker atmosphere, I'm not entirely sure. I will have to test that um, if I'm going to um, if I'm going to go to the moon in the next episode. So, do join me for the next episode. I will hopefully be going to the moon and hopefully not dying on re-entry. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.